let's welcome my wife, no? uh, Pasora Wayne. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Are you hungry? Okay. Uh, bear with me because I'll be discussing about the dynamics of the cell group. So a group is really very important as we implement the G12 vision in our churches, uh, especially here in Australia. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Okay, uh, before I go, I'd like to, um, I, I'd like for us to just commit this time in prayer. Father God in heaven, we thank you uh, for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to learn more about the vision. We just pray, Lord, that you give us a continuing desire to learn more. We ask that you open our hearts and our minds, uh, remove all the distractions, and we just pray that everything that we will receive today will be uh, translated into doing. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Okay, self-group. Uh, some of you, some of the churches here have been implementing self-groups. They have um, self-groups and others do not have yet. Am I correct? Okay, so just like what Pastor Rafi said, it will be a review and uh, uh, for those, you will learn about this. Okay, cell group. What is cell group? Let me just first define what cell, cell group is. Biologically speaking, when we say cell, we refer to the, it is the smallest unit of a living creature. Okay, uh, it is a fundamental unit of, of our body. But in terms of the ministry, subgroup is, is it in the PowerPoint? Okay. Subgroup is a small group of people who meet at least once a week um, in an effort or with the purpose of developing all-around growth centered on the Word of God. You will see there, okay, uh, there's a picture of a, small, of a small group or a cell group. Okay, it's on top, okay. Uh, you will see um, number of women, they got it together and they were, they, they are discussing something. They have the Bible with them, okay? Ideally, a small group or a cell group is in circular form, okay? They're in circle. Um, in the GTO vision, of course, what we want to happen is for you to have, um, the small group should, be, should comprise of 12 people. Um, just like what Pastor Rafi said, ideally it should be homogenous. <coughs> women to women, men to men, okay? Uh, young people to young people, older men to young older men, uh, and the likes, okay? Uh, yeah, we can do couples also, uh, but later on, um, we highly recommend that the that the wives should go together and then the, the husbands should be together, okay? Because it's best to discuss things um, on the basis of uh, the sex that we have, okay? All right, I'm getting my point, praise God. Okay, so ideally it should be once a week. And if, if it goes beyond that, it's okay. But for the purpose of, um, of our own schedule, it's better that we do it once a week, all right? So, um, but if you, if the 12 people is not possible, then you can start with two or three people first, okay, initially. Because uh, that's one of the arguments uh, to the digital version. Um, there are a lot of people who seems to be indifferent about the vision because they fear that they cannot form right away their 12 people, okay? So we highly recommend that it would be easier for you to start it with a small number of people. Just like what, uh, what the Bible says where two or three are gathered in God's name, in His name, is with them, right? Yeah. So you can start with a small number of people. But later on, the goal is for you to have uh, 12 people under your care, all right? So that's self-growth, okay? Um, how does the subgroup last? Okay, um, we recommend at least one hour. Okay, that's the minimum, one hour. Uh, for women, this is one of the dilemmas of the women because women talk a lot. 
Amen. Amen, women. <laughs> we have a lot of things to share about. So, in this case, you can go as uh, long as one and a half hours. Okay? One and a half hours. But beyond that, maybe it would be not ideal anymore. Alright? Unless the group is really at ease with one another and um, the schedule will not be something difficult for each one. Okay? So, uh, so that's how the cell group um, lasts. All right, what else? Venue. Where do we hold the, the cell group? Uh, you can do it in houses, offices, schools, and any other place like malls, park, uh, where it is, it is possible to meet or gather with a, with a small group every week. By the way, uh, you can also call cell group as live group or just a small group because some denominations call it life group. So we're not strict about it. Even in the digital vision, they just don't say that it has to be called cell group, okay? So whatever you like it. What's important is we gather as a small group. What else? Uh, so as I said, it has to be in the houses, offices, in schools. Just like what happened in the early church in Acts. Remember? Okay, they gathered in the temple, they also gathered from house to house. That's where we got the principle of the cell group, or the small group. Amen? Okay. So, we meet once a week. When is the day and the time? Whenever or whatever day or time set by the leader, or the cell leader, or the life group leader of the, uh, of the group, and the host of the venue. If the cell will be... Uh, conducted in, in houses, then there has to be a communication between the cell leader and the host of the venue. Alright? It's not just the cell leader who will dictate or set the date. There has to be a communication. But if it's outside the house, let's say in the park or in the mall, then it's, it is the call of the, the cell leader to set the date and the time. Whatever it is, whatever uh, schedule is convenient for everyone who will be coming in. Okay? Next, I'd like, for, uh, I'd like to teach about cell group because we, we have two types of cell group. Number one is the open cell or the evangelistic cell. Uh, cell groups exist for evangelism. One of the purposes of the cell group is for evangelism. We bring people to Christ through cell group. Uh, Pastor Rafi mentioned last last time or uh, yesterday, last night, that uh, rapid growth of the church happens through the cell group. Okay, because uh, the people attending the cell group is encouraged to really bring in or invite people uh, to the cell and eventually to the church. Okay, so what we do uh, is to encourage the members of the cell to really invite, especially those who are unchurched, those who are unbelievers, those who needed the Lord. Okay? So that's one purpose of the open cell. Everybody is welcome to come in. Everybody is welcome to be part of the cell group. So that's why we call it open. And then the other type of the cell group is the closed cell or the leadership cell. I want you to understand the uh, cell group, that the cell members in the open cell will not just stay in the, uh, in the open cell. Eventually, when they get discipled, uh, uh, of course, it will start from consolidation when they get preserved. Like, let's say, an unbeliever is invited in the cell and that person stays in the cell. Uh, that person regularly attends the cell. Um, the, the, that unbeliever will have the uh, opportunity to learn about, uh, to know, or to hear about the gospel or the message of salvation. And that person will have the opportunity to respond to the gospel. And when, the, and when that person responds to the message of salvation, then um, eventually he will be, that person will be preserved and he will have a new life in Christ. He will be taught about the, the things. That, uh, later on, it will be Pastor Ravi who will be discussing 
the basic principles or Christian lifestyle that should be observed of a new believer inside the cell or those who are already attending the Sunday service or the worship service. Okay? Uh, we have four basic lifestyle, but it will be Pastor Rafi who will be teaching you about it. Okay, and then later on, that person not, will not just be preserved, he will be, that person will be uh, discipled also. Okay? And when that person receives his discipleship, he will be encouraged, he will be empowered, and uh, uh, later on, that person will also receive the vision of uh, winning other people to Christ. Okay? And so what happened when he, when that person receives the, the vision to win the lost or to reach out to the lost? Um, that person will be groomed to be a cell leader also someday. And I hope everyone, except the pastors, of course, uh, those who are present in this place, if you are not yet a cell leader, um, I really encourage you, I highly uh, motivate you that you have that vision in your heart to be a pastor through the cell group just like what Pastor Rafi uh, mentioned a while ago remember okay that every cell leader is a pastor not by by title but by function okay because we shepherd people God has placed us in such a time like this okay to do the call of God. A great commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, is not only for those disciples whom the Lord spoke to uh, before ascending to heaven. It was passed on even up to us, up to our time. Amen? It is God's command to every single believer that He has uh, called to be His, His own. Amen? So, I really encourage you to have that Decide to be a cell leader here in Australia. Amen. Uh, in the Philippines, that's one of the secrets that we have. Um, why our church and many other churches are growing because of the cell group, because of many cell leaders that are being developed to do the call of pastoring, of shepherding. Amen. And God, as I've said, cell group um does not just exist for uh, uh for, for fellowship a cell group biologically speaking a cell group grows a cell okay a cell develops a cell multiplies a healthy cell multiplies amen and same thing with uh in the ministry uh, a healthy cell should grow a healthy cell should multiply a healthy cell leader should grow and multiply, Amen. should develop. Amen? Okay? We're, uh, we're not here just to maintain a group. We don't do cell like that. Amen? Okay. So what happens when that uh, disciple inside the cell receives or catches the vision? Then he will, that person will move from the open cell to, to the closed cell, which is the leadership cell. That person will, will be developed to, uh, to become a cell leader also. This afternoon, I'll be talking about the process, how to become a cell leader. Okay, what uh, that person uh, or a disciple should undergo to becoming a cell leader. Because we need to understand becoming a cell leader is a skill. It's not something that is inborn. Okay? It is something that we work on. It is something that uh, we need to undergo and we need to learn. So uh, in the digital vision, that this is what we like about it because there's a process. Okay? There's a system. It's not something that what we want to do, we do. No. We do it systematically. Amen? Okay? So I hope that you will still be here after the afternoon. Okay? Hopefully. <laughs> And pray, we pray that you will stay. All right, so that's the leadership cell. Okay, they will be promoted to the leadership cell. Just like what Pastor Rafi said, I have my, my primary 12. He has his primary 12. We meet once a week. Uh, actually, it's every Tuesday night. 
um, Pastor Rafi meets with his primary 12 leaders, I also meet with my uh, primary 12 women. But there are also cases that we combine, especially if we have uh, important an announcements that we needed to discuss within the group. But ideally, it should be on a separate thing, just like uh, with the case of Pastor Tim and Pastor Jenny. Um, if they will be able to form their 12 disciples, primary disciples, it should be like that. All right, so but it's really up to you when and where it should take place within the week. So what happens to the open cell? Uh, if that person, if the disciple moves to the closed cell, what will happen to the open cell? If the, that disciple uh, develops to be a cell leader, later on that disciple will have his or her own open cell also. So he will be attending, he or she will be attending two types of group. Okay? Two types of cell group. He, he or she will uh, take care of his or her open cell, and then he will be uh, he or she will be also attending the closed cell. So that person is being discipled and that person is also discipling. Amen. Amen? Okay. So what is the structure? How does a cell meeting go. All right? There are uh, recommended patterns, okay, or structure in doing a cell group gathering or cell group meeting. Okay, we, of course, everything has to start with a welcome. All right? We don't do a cell gathering as if you come and then you teach right away. No. Okay, we welcome everything, everyone that uh, everyone who arrives. Okay, we greet them, we greet them warmly, and we encourage them, them to just sit down, relax, and then when everybody has been settled, sitting down. Okay, what is the position? As I said, it should be uh, on a circle. Why? Why does it have to be like that? It has something to do with the communication line. If a cell, if a cell group gathers and the position is something like this, it will be uh, like a classroom setting. Amen? Okay? So there is a communication barrier to it. But if it's in a circular form, then the eye contact would be better. And then the discussion would be better also. Amen? Okay, so we welcome everybody who comes in. And then after that, of course, we, we do the opening prayer. We ask the Lord that you help, uh, that God will help us all throughout the meeting. And that the presence of God will be there. Okay, next. Um, this is optional, but it's good that if we observe this. In a small group gathering, the uh, testim testimonies um, be given by people who attend. What type of testimonies, um, what God has done in their life. Or sometimes we call this the icebreaker part. Okay, we break the ice. Because we need to understand that people who attend a cell group, whether it's an open cell or a cell group, usually these people are tired. These people are problematic. They have concerns before coming in, prior to coming in in your cell group. Amen? Right? So we need to make them at ease or uh, relax through the, through the uh, icebreaker uh, thing that you will do. It could be a game or just a simple question. Okay? If you compare your, your day yesterday in a weather, what would it be? Something like that. Amen? Or just think of other activities that you can do in the icebreaker. Um, icebreaker should not last long. Ideally, it should be 15 to 20 minutes only. All right? Uh, also, before I forget, in the welcome part, most of the cell group, like in the Philippines, what we do, uh, we prepare food. Especially for those, that if the young people, they love to eat. All people. Oh, all people. <laughs> 
Okay, that's why he, yeah, I understand in the Sunday ser service here, you still do the, the fellowship, the eating fellowship after the service. You can do something like that also in the cell group, but we do it before the cell. Okay? All right? So you can prepare food. If you, if, if you will do the cell group in the, in the house, then you talk to the host so that he, can, he or she can prepare the food. Or if um, the host has not enough budget, then within the group, okay, you can talk about it and you can assign, just like what you do here. All right? Okay, so testimony. And then after that, then the cell leader teaches the word. Okay? The, um, the word should, the teaching of the word and the discussion about the word should not uh, exceed 45 minutes. It, ideally, ideally, it should be 30 to 45 minutes. But if the cell group is only for just an hour, then you make it 30 minutes only. All right, the cell leader teaches uh, the word of God, but it, it doesn't stop there. Okay, it's it is not. I want you to understand that the cell group is not a Bible study. It's a different thing. In the Bible study, it is only the Bible teacher who teaches everything. All right, but in the cell group, we do facilitation. Okay, let me see the hands of those who are cell leaders already. Can you raise your hand, please? Okay, and I'm looking forward that uh, most of you will become cell leaders soon. Okay, uh, so the cell leader is not there uh, only to teach the word. That person, the leader, should facilitate. He or she has to throw questions um, based on the word that was discussed, that he or she discussed or discusses. Amen? Okay? So where do we take the lesson or the cell discussion guide? Ideally, what we do in the Philippines is the, the message, the Sunday service that was uh, spoken by the, by the pastor or whoever the speaker was in the previous Sunday, that will be the discussion for the cell group. In our case, it's Pastor Rafi who prepares um, the cell discussion guide. He teaches, he gives us the, the guideline for it, okay? And then, and the discussion questions. After we teach the, the message, and then we, we follow the questions in the discussion guide. And everyone in the cell group um, is encouraged to participate in, in the discussion. All right? So that's how it goes. Next. After teaching the Word of God, we pray for the different needs of those who are present in the cell. Okay? We pray for them. We ask, is there any prayer request that you would like to be prayed upon? Okay? You can also ask the group. Um, that's the beauty. One beauty of a cell group. Before, it, when we were in our traditional type of doing church, we have the prayer meeting, the once a week prayer meeting. But now, everyone is, uh, has the opportunity to take part in prayer time because they are part of the cell group. So the, cell me the prayer meeting is inside the cell already. Amen. Amen? So that's the beauty of it. I'm not saying that you remove or abandon the, the prayer meeting, but you can do the prayer meeting in the cell already, whether it's an open cell or it's a closed cell. So um, every one of us uh, has different needs, prayer needs, prayer requests, amen? So it's best that we pray these things inside the cell. And let the people see, those who attend, that the hand of God moves in prayer. Amen? As we pray for them. Okay. Uh, next is the instruction part. It is important that the cell leader gives instruction. Because, as I said, one of the tasks of a cell is for evangelism. Amen? So every cell group um, 
I should have a time to discuss how they can reach out to other people. They don't just exist for themselves. Amen? They exist for other people. God has called us through the strategy of cell group to reach out for other people, to other people as well. So what are the things that we can do? What are the things that we can discuss about during the instruction part? The leader can give um, advices or suggestions like uh, conducting birthday parties like that or many other ideas that they can do in reaching out to other people, that they can invite the people to the cell group. Amen? Okay, so just think about what are, what are the strategies that you can do, especially here in your context in Australia. And, of course, we close it in prayer. We close the group, the cell group in prayer. We thank God for all the blessings that we have received inside the cell. Amen? Okay. Pastor Rafi mentioned last night about the ladder of success, which, which is win, consolidate, disciple, and send. Um, that's one of the strategies that we do in the G12 vision. I want you to know that inside the cell group, the ladder of success happens. All right? Why? Because winning is helping someone or helping people find their way back to God. All right? That's evangelism. That's why I was telling you a while ago that the struggle exists in reaching out for people, in reaching out to those who needed Christ. Amen? Okay, next is consolidation. Uh, consolidation is helping people or helping someone to start up his or her new life in Christ. And uh, inside the cell group, we teach our people to have their uh, to have their new life in Christ. Okay, and then we also do discipleship inside the cell because discipleship is helping people find their uh, or helping people uh, have their life back into order because many people, especially the unbelievers. Uh, their life before, or they came from a life that is dysfunctional, right? Okay, so it is our goal inside the cell that we help them uh, to put their life in order, okay? Because a lot of people, their life is in out of their life is out of order in their appearance, in their values, what else, in their belief, and many other areas. That's why it is our goal inside the cell that we help them uh, put their, their, their life back into order. And then the sending part is we help the people or we help our members or the attendees of the cell to get engaged in Jesus' mission. What is Jesus' mission? Jesus' mission is to win the lost. Amen? That's why we are putting the vision in their hearts. We are challenging them to have the same vision, uh, just like uh, the, the same desire, the same passion uh, that Jesus had and Jesus has up to now for the lost. Amen? Amen. Okay, so I think uh, I had enough. All right, and it's lunch time, so we can eat, we can feast. Okay, let me close in prayer for this session, for this morning session. We thank you, Lord, for everything that we have received this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this vision of winning souls and making disciples. We ask, oh God, right now, that you put a strong desire and compassion in our hearts. Enlarge our hearts for people. Oh God, we, we really pray and we desire that you will use us um, from where we are right now. Use us, Lord, in reaching for people to Christ and giving our time, no matter what the cost it is, Lord. As long we have all the strength, as long as we have all the opportunities, we will give our life to you, Lord. We would like this life to matter for your kingdom, for your glory alone, because this is your call in our life. Thank you, God. We love you. 
And please bless our um, our lunch today, Lord, this uh, time. Uh, we pray, Lord, that you will continue to speak to us in our afternoon sessions. Thank you, Lord. We bring you back all the glory and the praises. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.